Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of There's Will Be Talks for you. Today is Friday, May the 6th, 2016 and I am here to bring you your latest Pokemon news. That's right, nothing else happened to the internet. I'm just going to talk all about Pokemon and how Pokemon did things in the internet today. Uh, including Pokemon 1, which is a realistic shooter that uh, Ash Ketchum goes back to World War 1 and experiences the harms of mustard gas. I'm, I'm just messing with everyone again. So, anyway, what I wanted to bring up was actually Pokemon Sun and Moon. Uh, there will be another announcement of something next week on May 10th around 5 o'clock in the morning. So, I'll be covering that. Uh, when that does break. So I'm a huge Pokemon nerd. If anyone who doesn't know that. I even have a Flareon here at all times next to me pretty much. Just because Flareon is my friend. And you know when I don't take the pills he does talk to me. So let's get into the big gaming news of the week. We do have Battlefield 5. But we're they're going to call it Battlefield 1. This is a DICE Studios joint. Uh, from the publisher EA, which is, again, as I keep on saying in all my videos, the top of the, or one of the top big third party studios. Um, we have the trailer for Battlefield 1 right here in front of us. So we will watch it live and I will put it up in the corner here next to me. So that way we can all have our live reactions. I won't watch any video with it. But actually, we'll have to sit there and add first. So we're going to wait for the ad to play, and then we will talk, so I will cut out the ad. So, Okay, so ad's over. Let's watch this trailer. Uh, we're going to watch it together. I've watched this trailer once already. We see a guy and a horse in, in the desert, probably Saudi Arabia. I don't know when exactly World War I takes place or where it takes place. I'm not a history buff. All I know is that there are a lot of mustard gas, a lot of trenches, and tanks. So there we see horses. So a little bit of mustard gas there too. Um, if you can't hear the sound in the background, it's actually um, Seven Nation Armies by the White Stripes. Flamethrowers. See, the dog fighting should be really nice in this game because it is a lot of fly planes. You're gonna have a lot of fun flying fly planes and shooting people down. A lot of easier time. Do you see this guy over at a Zeppelin? And what does that mean for the gameplay? Who knows right now? It might be a huge battlefield experience. Now, Polygon also did a story as to why they were setting the game in World War One. You don't know what Polygon is, it's another gaming website that brings you gaming news, but they do a lot of nice and interesting stories that. I enjoy reading and I think you guys will enjoy reading too but I will kind of go over why they pretty much or why EA and DICE went way back to World War One to kind of reset the historical shooter on its head now of course everyone knows about World War One they were in trenches there were tanks it was in Germany that's how much I know. I got a buddy of mine who's a big history buff that will probably be yelling at the screen right now telling me it's not just about tanks and stuff. But that's why I have this news story here right in front of me. So he'll be very, very proud after I read this and I find out why World War I is not just about tanks, trenches, and all other stuff. We have Zeppelins. Humongous helium field Zeppelins. Now these Zeppelins could be storming the battlefield. It could be uh, only one particular Zeppelin gets uh, gets given per actual game, or even if every Zeppelin is map based. And who knows what these Zeppelins can do? I don't know what these Zeppelins can do. I all I know is that they can probably drop a lot of bombs. At least I believe that's how they're used in World War II as to be flying into fields and or flying into uh, different types of cities and bombing cities. Or do they even have Zeppelins in World War II? 
I don't know. I don't know when the Hindenburg crashed even. So I'm, I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of nerdy guy who understands history. But we also do have biplane dogfights. Now, if you ever have a fan of Snoopy, you know about the Red Baron and how much fun you saw Snoopy flying around in his, uh, in his doghouse trying to defeat the Red Baron. But dogfighting in actual biplanes. It seems a little bit like, oh, well, you don't get to lock on the missiles, you don't go to all that stuff, but that's make, that's what makes it fun, ladies and gentlemen. Manual combat makes things better. You actually have to use skill, and you actually have to use sight lining and aiming and leading your targets and all this other stuff. There weren't any fancy smancy computers back in the day to lead uh, lead targets and pretty much just is you use basic instinct to fight any other pilots now this is what's going to make dogfighting fun in battlefield one and we also have not just a musket fire or anything like that but we also have a little bit machine guns actually i believe in the actual trailer so they will be using the trench warfare machine guns now trench warfare in this game i'm sure is going to be quite the difficult situation to pull off a huge victory for with the push and pull style of system that trench warfare usually is now the reason why trench warfare was so legitimately crazy was because german soldiers also did have machine guns to just mow everything down in front of them why is this why didn't they just take cover well, because there was no cover. These were actually dead man's lands with no cover whatsoever. You just were running up there with your gun and attempting to take that trench and attempting to push forward, push forward, push forward. And then by the end of the month, you were pushed back all the way to where you started because of these machine guns. Machine guns actually will probably take a big toll against any type of uh, American soldier or any type of allied forces soldier. I think the Allies were a thing in World War One. I'm not sure. Again, so if I'm using wrong terms, I'm sorry, guys. But you kind of get what I'm saying is that there will be an overpowered side and the underpowered side. So who knows if maybe the Germans or anything like that will actually have less people to uh, hold down their forts, and then the American side or whoever is facing the or whoever is facing the opponents will have a better advantage on the player side of things um, or maybe even different types of bombing runs or more i saw it in the trailer i think that's what that is i think there's actual mustard gas in this game which seems to be a very frightening thing unless it's just in the single player campaign for a storyline uh for a storyline type of deal who knows this is all Pretty much what I'm, I'm speculating from the at least trailer here. Now I am sorry for everyone trying to listen to this and trying to kind of follow a cohesive thought train that I have. But I literally actually just woke up before doing this and I probably saw the trailer only once as I woke up. Threw some clothes on and decided to put the camera on for actual live thoughts of me doing this. Um... I do like, I do enjoy actually giving you guys the live thoughts of my first impressions of a trailer or anything like that. So that's what I kind of did yesterday with the, uh, with the Power Rangers outfits. And I really enjoyed doing that. So I will enjoy doing this more often than not uh, for any type of huge, big, monolithic trailers. Um, we have E3 coming up very soon in the month of June. That's only literally a month away, and I know all the gaming industry people are absolutely dreading having to go to LA and put on the performance and put on their games for a whole bunch of uh, nerds that are not even in the gaming industry like me. But we're going to keep on doing the live trailer, actual live trailer, uh, what am I going to call it? Live trailer uh, reactions. That's what it's called. So it's not a reaction video, it's actually a trailer reaction. Um, but I'm not going to call it that. It's just going to be here in the Thessaly Talks free. Where, you know, I like to kick back, relax, and not even care about structure and all these. 
Um, it's just me talking to you guys, of course, the viewers, the audience. Um, one last thing I do want to go over, though, with the Battlefield 1 stuff is the actual settings of the games. Uh, again, in this Polygon article here, in this Polygon article here, <laughs> I wish I could talk in these videos and not mess up, but why not? It's fun. Uh, the include the locations will include muddy fields, forests of France. So this will take place a little bit in France. If you don't know about World War One, that's where a lot of it was actually taking place, I believe. So don't quote me on that. But we also have the deserts of Arabia, where you actually, I believe, saw the horses in that first trailer. Uh, in the first part of the trailer, you saw the horses and the guys with the uh, with the sabers. And we have the Italian Alps, which will probably have a lot more uh, dog fighting and a lot more, I wouldn't say trench warfare, but kind of mountainous vertical warfare, maybe. Now, of course, this is a strange moment in the gaming industry where we do have a gaming company that is going back and retroing their video game to be in the past and a game who is going toward the future with their game. And what I'm talking about is Activision Infinite Warfare staying up here in the future. But then we have Battlefield 1 going back all the way, way past World War II which there was a crop of actual shooters and based on World War II, that's actually where Battlefield pretty much started was in World War II, as well as Call of Duty, as well as Medal of Honor as well. Uh, but we don't see Medal of Honor anymore. Uh, but we're having Battlefield pretty much go way back to World War I, and we have these two military style of shooters taking place on opposite ends of the time spectrum. Now, I'm not saying that the next battlefield will be taking place in the Civil War or something like that. I think that's too much of a hot-button topic for them to even touch, especially with slavery involved with the Civil War. But we have Battlefield 1 taking place in World War 1 and Infinite Warfare taking place in like World War 27 or something like that. Um, tell me what you guys think of this really huge diversity in the games that we're seeing this holiday season for the military style of shooter. So I will see you guys next week. It is Friday here, so it is time for me to pretty much edit all of the After Dark series. So I will see you guys on Monday, hopefully Monday as well. I'm going to promise myself to this too so I can at least get this done. I will have intros for After Dark. I will possibly have an intro for Desla B Talks as well. That means introductions, which means that I will be able to put something together to actually put in front of this rather than just me saying, hey, how you doing? All right. So I'll see you guys next week. I'll see you guys on Monday. Over the weekend, I'll be posting more After Dark type of stuff uh, with layers of fear. So see you guys on Monday. Bye, everyone.